A very good afternoon to all of you. It's a great pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Actually, I'm the least qualified to sit here to go and talk to you because in terms of putting effort, so many more in the audience are actually having put in numbers of hours, hundreds of hours and thousands of hours to make the 30 years journey a very meaningful one. In fact, if I were given a choice, three quarters of you in, the, in this floor should be sitting here talking to the world about what BGF, CU had been doing the last 30 years. Nevertheless, they suggested I'm given the limelight to talk about the history and the background of BGFCU, the GEM, BGF GEM headline. It all began 32 years ago. 32 years ago, I got a call from brother Chi Wei Yung. He said, Sengbi, you just came from Singapore. Uh, would you like to help us with this counseling program? I said, brother Chi, uh, I'm very busy. I just landed in Sing Malaysia. I spent 10 years in Singapore. I'm really not able to take on this role. Uh, I think three calls later, <laughs> three calls later, he's very persistent. I said, okay, uh, let me uh, hear you out. And so he gave me a background to say that 32 years ago, they had a speaker called Mikhail Armstrong who came to talk about counseling. And the members of BGF were so inspired that they say, we would like to continue this process. So therefore, we came together and got about 20 to 25 people. Uh, the names, uh, you, you probably know some of them. There are some of them is in the room here. Uh, we came together and we said, in order for us to start something meaningful, we can't just openly say, let's go and help people. Let us get our people to be trained from the mental perspective, the mindset, the appropriate mindset of helping, as well as the skill set of helping. We as a Buddhist community have many compassionate people and helping is second nature to the Buddhist practice. Having said that, because they are not trained, because many of these helpers are not trained, we actually go around giving our own version of helping. So the one-year journey was to really get the whole group together to understand the mindset of a good helper and the skill set of good helper. And very interestingly, when we went through the whole year of our training, every fortnight or three weeks, one Sunday, we come together and spend three, four hours. And they gave me the full liberty to take them through the journey together. And together, after one year of training, we sat down and said, where do we go from here? So it was on that time they said we should start a hotline, a Buddhist counseling service. And lo and behold, it gets started. Luckily, we have um, a very supportive leadership team of BGF at that point in time. Uh, despite all the challenges that BGF went through, uh, they agree we should start the service. They then of course, Brother Victor had this saying, said, Brother Victor said, you know, one of my concerns uh, in BGF, we like to start many things, uh, but we never see through many things. <laughs> so he then said, uh, would you guys be dedicated enough to make sure this is followed through? So the pioneers team and me, we agreed, we shall dedicate ourselves to follow through with clear focus on the BGF counseling unit. So some of us become quite unpopular in the Buddhist community because every time we got invited to give a talk, we said, oh, no, we have no time. Uh, because there's only one organization we give our focus concentration called the BGFCU. So for the last 30 years, I think this group of partners in and out, we continue to work with the BGF uh, Gem Helpline team to train volunteers. So that was how it started. The journey wasn't easy. Uh, we needed a room, we needed a hotline. Luckily, uh, K. Sri Damananda, chief priest of uh, Riviera, uh, dedicated a small room to us. And of course, it wasn't easy either because along the way, uh, when we do the whole process, uh, we, our rooms are locked and the line didn't work. <laughs> but nevertheless, despite all the challenges, the team continued to endeavor through to make sure it happened. So, 
Brother Chi Wei Yong was very supportive. He continued to update BGF. We told him that uh, you handle the the management of BGF, the day-to-day -day of running the counseling unit, the pioneers will run it. And so that began the journey of every year one batch of volunteers are trained. Initially it started with 30, 40, then during the peak, during the peak, it was 80 to 100 participants per year. Of course, we then become much more organized and more systematic over time. We say that actually, uh, not all of them want to go through to be a deep, capable helper. Different people have different needs. And so we started to tier our training program. Of course, we started with a one day of recruitment process, followed by stage one, stage two, and those days, stage three. And as different coordinators handle the whole sequence of the training program, we started to fine tune the program. So when it came to system EN, we have a clinical psychologist, she put in a slightly different input and give it a breath of fresh air. So every other few years, the curriculum went through a refinement and a development. So it was never so static. Now coming back to this helping process, we realized that actually when someone need help, they actually had gone through so many sources of help. If they go and see the mother-in-law, the mother-in-law said, I hear you, you got a problem. Let me tell you this is how you should do it. They got a problem, they went to see the priest. The priest said, come, let's pray. And yet the problem never go away. Then they go to their best friend. The best friend, yeah, la, you la, like that. La. You should do this, you should do that. But again, the problem didn't go away. And many of these people in need, really desperate. Because those days, professional help Psychologists, counselors, and psychiatrists in Malaysia, the profession wasn't, wasn't well developed. So a lot of people didn't know that they should go for formal help, proper help. And in those days, luckily, we have some hotlines. And one of them is BGFCU hotline. They call, hi, I need help. And suddenly, a voice said, I'm here for you. Tell me more, tell me more, tell me some more. I realized you are upset. What do you want help from, from me? So suddenly a voice came in and listened to the person who need help. And because it's trained, it is no longer the agenda of the helper, it is the agenda of the person in need. And the empathy truly is customized to the requirement of the person who need help. And therefore, they suddenly realize the other person on the other line really help him or her not to jump off the ninth floor. And that was a very important development. We make sure that volunteers, before they actually go and take the helpline, they are trained. And those days under Sister Casey and Sister Mian time and different coordinators time, they actually put them through a lot of role play to make sure that before you take the line, you are confident enough to help the person through the challenges and the problem. And of course, uh, one of the things that we realize is uh, many people having gone through the counseling program, there's this insecurity of, can I really help people? Do I really have the capability and the confidence? There goes the team development. I think the community of helper start to grow. And as they grow, they support each other. And we also found that when people in need went through the training program, the first thing when we put them through the theory and practice of the helping process, they look at themselves. Father, mother, problem. In-law, problem. Sibling, problem. Marriage, problem. Many workers, problem. And as they go through the training program, they reflect the theory and the concept of practice into, into their own daily life. And they discover that actually that one year of training with us is a personal development journey rather than trying to help people, is to help yourself first. And that was my original training when I was in NUS, a social worker. It is about helping me to be more effective individual. And having been a more effective individual, I now learn the process of being able to help people more effectively. You see, 90% of help out there are not helpful. 
90% of help there are what we call condescending help. Help that the helper thought, I know more, you know less, and therefore let me tell you how to help yourself. And 90% is not effective because the person in need did not get his or her concern, issue, problem, and option debated, discussed, and understood. So this whole process of going through really resonated the Buddhist community. And the last 30 years, every year we have groups of people coming for training. And some of you also knew that when you went through first year during the phase one, you realize you got no time to go for phase two, phase three. You can always catch up later, next year, following year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. And somebody said, just now shared with me that they were dead. They were reversed in 2012. And then they re-signed back again a few sessions later. So it become a very good practice every year to allow people to come in, join, and take their time to pick up the skills of helping. So one day was very interesting. I think it was Brother Chu Beng Hock. Chu Beng Hock, Brother Chu Beng Hock said, Sing Bi, we've done so many training programs, but the number of people actually end up doing counseling on the hotline is only less than 20%. Why do we want to waste time on the other 80%? Then we say, actually, through the last many years of uh, training many of these volunteers, uh, our ambition is, besides helping on the hotline, is to help the Buddhist community to be more effective personally, interpersonally, and socially. And many of these people, after they finish the program, they said, I become a better father to my son. I become a better spouse to my spouse. And I become a better father, better mother, and better brother, better sister, and a better colleague. So the moment you become better, just because you have gone through this whole process, we are more than happy to have invested in you. I think that said over the last 30 years, therefore, if you look at the number of people I went through, I think we probably trained at least a thousand over. Uh, members of a Buddhist community. So actually my face has become quite popular. They say, simply I know you. So oops, I am sorry. Uh, because 30 years, my memory are not so good. <laughs> and age does catch up. So let me move on. Uh, after the team actually went through the whole journey, we actually found that the pioneers, the pioneers play a very important role. That group of 20 people, uh, I think last year, Sister Mi Ling, myself Wei Ling, and Sister Li Ping, uh, we went for our mini get-together. Uh, these pioneers still catch up from time to time. And likewise, different batch of the counseling program, they started to form their own support system, and they help each other in times of need along the way. And true enough, along the journey, some of our helper actually get into some personal problem, and therefore, it's easier for them to go back to the people who have worked work together and trained together for mutual help as they move forward. So firstly, it's our deep gratitude to all the people who come together to set up this whole journey of BGFCU. We realized it wasn't easy. Uh, and as we went around to talk to different Buddhist temples in Malaysia, every Buddhist temple already had some idea of wanting to start a Buddhist counseling service, but never really get started. The reason why we got started is because it was a collective karma. The group of people come together, everybody agree, resonated, and said, this is the right time, the best time, and we started initiating. And of course, uh, along the journey, we discovered that um, Tan Xiang also has their own version of uh, counseling. And along the way, we synergize exchange volunteer training and so on, which is pretty good as well. So our deep gratitude to all the pioneers for the endeavors, uh, commitment, and right effort in moving the initiative forward to start it. But this counseling service will not be able to achieve its full realization without a proper training program. So the training program, uh, I must say, I must say, had been very interesting as well as inspiring. In fact, the word inspiring is so important. We inspired many, many people to take the journey to want to help people. Some, uh, sometimes um, in the Theravada community, we do have a challenge. In the Theravada community, we have a lot of people who are very quiet. 
they come to Buddhist activity just to take care of their own spiritual development. But this whole journey of helping others is the core of the Buddhist practice of compassion. And so for those already who got good compassion, we put in place the right skills for them to be able to help people effectively. And for those people who are trying to come in to explore what is this whole helping process is all about, we managed to inspire them to say, this is one way to be a good lay Buddhist, inspire you to help other people. And through the journey, we also have inspired quite a number of participants who initially come in to just find out and say, what is this counseling all about? And quite a few got so inspired, decided to leave their job, went to do their master's degree, went to do their PhD, and some of them became quite accomplished uh, professional helpers. So that's the inspiration aspect of <laughs> me and laugh because me and not a few people who actually went through the journey. Because halfway through they said, I really don't want to do my computer job. I didn't do my, my job at work. This is what I want to dedicate my rest of my life. And they take off, went to university, take a degree, and then voila, they become full-time professional helpers. Now, one of the key aspects is to make sure that everybody who come they actually get their good return on investment different people come for the training program with different motivation and luckily the three-tier training program stage one stage two stage three or sometimes stage two stages really allow the help the participant to take different pieces of the inspiration and the development with them I thought it would be nice for me to now spend a few minutes giving a deep bow, okay, a deep bow to this group of people. I think they deserve our bow because they truly helming the role of a coordinator in the Buddhist counseling unit. They spend hours, days, weeks, weekend and sleepless nights to make sure that all the training program went on and all the hotline are always having the right volunteers to be on duty. No joke, huh? these people, they're all very busy professionals and yet they volunteer full time. So we got brother, brother Chinka, uh, Sister Mian. So if you look through the list, Sister Pui Ling, Brother Chu Beng Hock, Brother Lee Jack, Jack Chin, Sister Mian, Chinka, Brother Lim Cheng Yen, and I always put in there uh, the wife, sister Iris. Then uh, brother Lim Meng Sheng, brother Cheng Yang, and sister, sister Iris again. And now sister Wong Chun Hyong. So, a big sadhu, a big sadhu. Of course, that have to also go to people who are the resource people over time. You see, this is a volunteer work. We actually don't pay people. We just give a small token, which is actually not even enough to pay for the patrol. Uh, but they actually travel to, to spend time helping us in different aspects of the training program. So notably, uh, Sister Barbara in the audience. Uh, thank you, Sister Barbara. I met her one day in a social work association and we start talking and I said you know there's this counseling service would you like to help us and i think lo and behold uh, sister barbara played a very significant role then of course if you look at um, sister casey uh, sister mian brother chinka i must say that brother chinka is probably one of our most respectable uh, colleague who have been giving us a lot of energy Brother Chinka now spent a lot of his energy truly going out to help some welfare homes with the right food and beverages. So if you want to donate money, uh, Brother Chinka is one person you can donate to. <laughs> and he surely give you a proper account that every cent that you give, 100% actually go to the charity. So these are the people who actually year in, year out, volunteer to come in to do the training. So actually my job was quite easy. My job was to continue to come in to tell people, uh, this is what we do, please come and help us. Uh, but these are the people who actually did all the hard work 
and actually do all the real tough training. Uh, they like to use me because they say I'm a good salesman. <laughs> so usually uh, on the first day of the workshop, I do the selling process law. I say that, look, this is what we're going to cover the program. If you like it, come and join us, stage one, stage two, stage three. And it's, it's more marketing and selling. Uh, but actually, it was this group of speakers and the volunteers, the committee and the coordinators who really kept the JAM helpline moving forward in a very, very motivating manner. And then, of course, our donors. Uh, we have one donor who one day who told us, said, uh, Singbi and uh, committee, I cannot help you at all. I really enjoy the stages of training, uh, but I got a house. Would you like to take over the house and use it for counseling? But that time we couldn't do it because we were not a registered entity. So we didn't want to own the house. Uh, but then later, for some reason, she took, she must have sold the house and took 300,000 ringgit and gave it to counseling unit. Said, I, I got no time and no capability, but I got money, 300,000, please use it. Of course, uh, because uh, BGF, CU, we are not a registered organization, of course the money went to the parent company. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and it is since then we were self-sustaining. We never took any ringgit from BGF proper. Every ringgit we spent, every food that you saw, all came from the volunteer's pocket and from the small little fee that we collected and make sure that everybody had their lunch, their tea. Actually, the lunch and tea are fantastic. Huh? Uh, they are really the highlight. <laughs> You see, the volunteers really spent a lot of time making sure that the food was really good. And that is another motivator. Keep your stomach well fed and you will be motivated to do forward. And finally, uh, the BGA committees over the years, because the BGA committee have been very instrumental to provide us a very conducive environment to continue our work. And finally, the volunteers and supporters. A thank you to all of you. Big sadhu to all of you. Thank you very much.